batteries. Without batteries, there would be no tasers or remote control vibrators, and our cell phones and electric cars would require really, really long extension cords. From the tiny cells in your watch, to the powerful batteries in your laptop, and even to the massive double magnum batteries in your bipedal battle robot, these humble energy storage devices power our modern world. But how, who, when, and why batteries? What's the whole story? Hi, I'm Nigel Fitzgerald Brewer, and it may surprise you to know that the whole story of the battery does not start in 1780, with Luigi Galvani's observation that touching a dead frog's leg with a statically charged scalpel caused it to kick. While this discovery brought him fame and fortune and allowed him to tour the world as the amazing Galvani and his dancing frogs, it was not the first time that the power of storing electricity had been exploited. That honor goes to Mesopotamia circa 0 AD. In 1936, archaeologists discovered the Baghdad Battery, a crude electrochemical storage device in a terracotta pot that shows that humans have been experimenting with electricity for over 2,000 years. Experts agree that these primitive devices would only have been able to power a laptop for an hour or two at best, barely enough time to watch a movie using the ancient Mesopotamian equivalent of Netflix. Lacking electrical outlets in the walls of their stone houses, owners of these batteries would have had to recharge them manually by waiting for a lightning storm and gathering up any extra electricity found lying on the ground. Despite the effort involved, being able to check email and play Minesweeper while lying in bed would have definitely been a status symbol. Over the next several thousand years, battery technology remained largely unchanged, although we do see the appearance of battery recharge stations circa 300 AD. These stations employed people to hold dead batteries while yelling curses at the sky in hopes of angering the gods into hitting them with lightning bolts. Contemporary accounts indicate that the success of these stations was mixed at best. Back in more modern times, a friend of Luigi Galvani's named Alessandro Volta continued to experiment with Galvani's work, eventually realizing that the electricity generation was caused by the metal in the scalpel and not by the frogs themselves. With this newfound knowledge, Volta built what is generally considered to be the first modern battery by stacking copper and zinc discs separated by a layer of cloth. Volta was a humble man and despite his genius, was very poor at naming things. So when asked what his invention was, he simply said, solo un mucho de roba, or just a pile of stuff. And so the voltaic pile was born. The next 60 years saw many advancements in battery technology, from the increased life and reliability of the Danielle cell, to the increased power and bling factor of the platinum-coated Grove cell, to the convenience and ice smoothing capabilities of the Zamboni pile. These new batteries were certainly an upgrade over the clay pots, but the problem of recharging remained. In 1859, a French physicist named Gaston Planté stumbled upon the solution when he inadvertently dropped his BLT into a vat of sulfuric acid. At this time, the dangers of lead poisoning were not well known as they are today, and the bacon, lead, and tomato sandwich was a lunchtime staple. The lead reacted with the acid to produce electricity, but Planté discovered that by adding electricity to the battery, he could reverse the reaction and recharge it. Science is not without sacrifice, however, and no matter how much electricity he added, he was not able to get his sandwich back. The recharging problem now solved, the next innovation came in 1886 from German scientist Karl Glasner, who invented the first dry cell zinc carbon battery. These new batteries didn't leak, were safer, and they could be used in many applications their wet cell predecessors could not. They also enabled the invention of the flashlight, which allowed adventurous teenagers to safely explore haunted houses and creepy abandoned theme parks with their talking dogs. Scientists had developed new battery types at a steady pace over the last 125 years. Nickel cadmium batteries in 1899, alkaline batteries in 1955, nickel metal hydride in 1989, and finally lithium ion batteries in 1997 were all invented by following the guide of those early pioneers. Find the most poisonous, caustic, or explosive chemicals you can, and seal them up in an airtight container and sell them to consumers. So there you have it. From clay pots to lead sandwiches, the history of the battery shows what can be accomplished when scientists from all over the world 
build on each other's work in the hopes of making a product they can patent and get rich off of. So the next time you think you know all about something, remember, you may not know the whole story. Paul, we've been here for an hour. We need a stinger. I can't think of anything funny. Okay, if you don't come up with a stinger in the next five minutes, we're not stopping for frozen yogurt. But, but I want frozen yogurt. I didn't want it before, but I kind of want it now. Uh, just be funny. I, I don't know how to do that. It's okay. We'll get through this. You know what would help us get through this? Frozen yogurt? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. <laughs>